I got my Amazon proof back, my first Amazon proof. How exciting, am I right? It was very exciting up until I discovered I had 24 hours of edits to do. After reading this first proof, one thing became super apparent. I need a templated workflow so that I can save the time that I need to keep on going with other chapters. Now I'm going to share with you my affordable workflow that will save you time and money. Let's go. All right, so first things first, what do we need? What programs do we need? So I'm currently using Clip Studio Pro. That is about 50 bucks, which isn't bad compared to the EX version, which is, I think, $2.99. Um, they also have like a buttload of options on their website. So, you know, you could do the monthly plan and probably be fine. I don't like subscription services, so I'm just going to stay away from that. This is the file that I'm going to be using hold on, for all of my creations. So I have my little template here. It matches the margins that are given in Clip Studio Paint. It's called Dansha Manga. It's a Shonen Magazine, but it's not the Shonen Jump one. I think these two can be switched over, which depending on whichever you, know, you prefer. And so I've made a layer that looks exactly like that, just to give myself consistency throughout the platforms that I'm going to be using. And I'm going to start from here. So the reason why I have a little bit of extra space and on the width of this is it's going to give me extra bleed room beyond the red lines for digital exports. So in Manga Plus creators, um, their resolution size that meets the standard of getting ranked and um, getting a higher rank in the system is... It's a little bit wider than the, what this page gives you. So I want to give myself enough room that if I know that I'm going to have some kind of action scene that bleeds out, I need to make it bleed out a little bit further than what these parameters are showing me. So that when I export it in the digital space and upload it to something like Manga Plus, it's the right resolution, it's the right amount of bleed, I'm not going to deal with any problems. So that's why I have this extra space here in this document. So this template file will be in the file that I include into the Gumroad. Okay, moving forward, once I have everything that I need, right, I'm going to move it over into Figma. So first off, I'm going to do a real quick um, example piece. Let's say I have my file. Now that the art is done, I'm going to drag you into my Figma. Here is my Figma file template, all right? So here are my pages and they have the same layout as the CPS file. I go into here, select the placeholder image and just replace it. Okay, so now that I have my art piece, I'm going to line it up with the guides again. So here are the guides for the Clip Paint Studio and what you need to follow through into Figma. So the first is the inner, all text needs to be inside of this. Um, this is important because as you're going throughout the whole process, you're going to want to make sure that this sticks with that so that when you import it into the Affinity software, it's going to be consistent. So the second one is totally allowed to have art weed in it just as long as there's no text. And third is the printing trim and the cutoff. And you can still have bleed here for the art. Um, it just depends on what you're doing with that page. So as you can see, since we've got text here, I'm going to align that here. And everything is within the text box, that first frame. OK, cool. Then we got that art frame on the other side. Everything looks good. So I'll go ahead and put my my example text. Now I have done the work already, the proofing, the QA, et cetera, et cetera, to make sure that your font doesn't turn out extremely, extremely small. Cause that's a little hard to assess uh, between digital and print when you're not working with files that are specific to the format. So this digital format, it needs to be 36 pixels else 
you're going to have these really ridiculously small fonts. And that's something that took me a part, a good part of this 24 hours of editing that I had to do. I had a bunch of um, sentences that were in 24 size font, and it was just a huge no, no for the print. So good to know, make sure that you're not going under what is already there on the file. So now I have this little example. So what I'm going to do now is just export it. I'm going to just give you a little look, see of what the workflow looks like here. So this is obviously where you're going to spend most of your time doing your actual art flow. However, if you're going to be posting on other platforms, I've also provided a little template area for you to go ahead and do what you got to do for the extra pages for the cover art for the other platforms. Because annoyingly, <laughs> for some reason, they demand, they don't ask, they demand you have specific sizes for certain things. Here's an example, Webtoon. I don't know why, but it has, it asks for the weirdest resolution for your cover page which I guess is 1080 by 1920. Tapas has a small one that is 960 by 1440. And they won't take like any other sizes for some reason. Um, so that's what you got to work with here. I also have little uh, templates for your advertisement drops, some inner pages for buffer pages. Um, I think it helps to advertise what is going on in your current milestone while you're posting these things. I think it's a benefit, especially to link back to your link tree so that people are coming back to you rather than just the platform. We have a cover builder as well. So you don't have to use this, but uh, this is the style that I'm going with for Eclipse is this little bar across the way with the name and all that. This is my actual print cover, so what I worked up with this. Some other things in this Figma file are the export ready um, tab. So what I like to do here is because there's like a lot of things going on, such as your little template area and your whiteboard, you don't really want to use this tab to export like all pages or just export to PDF, whatever you're doing. You just want to drag whatever pages you need for that chapter and put it into export ready. Um, it makes the whole process a little bit faster. Again, I'm like obsessed with workflow, so I want to make sure that I'm streaming through things rather than stumbling and not understanding things because my brain bandwidth is too busy, right? So I put it into the exports tab. Okay, once you have that export, you have the size that you need for Manga Plus Creators platform. Everything is standard to the 1920 by 2560. If you're, if you're wanting to move into So one other thing that I want to mention is if you're going to go ahead and do this, um, I made a little slice tool emulator to help somebody with this process. So now that we have our Figma pages, we're ready to get into the actual laying out of the file for export. I've got my page. I did my little sample page so i'm going to go into affinity designer affinity designer is i think around 70 dollars and again over clip paint studio ex you're still saving a good amount of money because this is a one-time purchase and of course clip studio does still offer one-time purchases but it's significantly more money if you're going to buy the ex account and i don't know if it's a, a good purchase or not because I have not tried it, but I prefer platforms that are designed for this kind of use, especially since I'll be using it to create different kinds of materials other than just the manga. So if I wanted to create a lookbook or something like that, that has a different kind of format, I find it easier for me to have something that is like InDesign rather than just using one single program that doesn't seem to be graphic design friendly. I'm going to open up my template that I provided you. So as you can see, it still matches one to one with the Clip Paint Studio sizing and the margins and the Figma sizing and the margins. I did not have this when I first started out. 
I certainly didn't do it when I was working in chapter one as a complete noob. And so now that I have this, I have a standardized way of doing things and it will save me so much time and so much pain in this process. So let's get going. I'm going to import my little example page. Right, okay. So what I did was I dragged it up against these bleed lines, which is the red area right here. And as you can see, the text still sits inside of the text box. The art uh, expands up into the art line, but then we still have our bleed. So as an example, this area right here, that should have been filled in. So this is where the red line, this is like the pixels where the red line is. So you need to drag your art up into the red lines. Make sure that it always fits there and you'll be able to see it in the KDP previewer. If you do see a trim of white, you're doing it wrong. I figured, oh, maybe because I had a custom size that, oh, maybe the previewer isn't working correctly. No, it was. It was I was wrong. However, yes, there was a little margin of error, I guess, in the previewer because there was things that like there was a white line in this area as well, but they did trim it. So just know that you don't want any white lines just in case anywhere. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. We exported it here. And as you can see, it is a little bit wider than, um, than the like document itself. And that's because Again, we're exporting for, for Manga uh, Plus, so it is a wider resolution, but I, it still makes sense within this program because when you move into page mode, after you're done setting it up, you wanna go back to pages. So you're gonna turn off facing pages and then you're gonna export that way. So the reason why you wanna start in spread mode is because it gives you a good idea of how the flow of the actual print is going to look. We always wanna know what that looks like, make sure that these pages that are paired together do make sense and adjust accordingly. If you're doing like a full on spread between two pages, um, make sure that you plan ahead of time when you're in your storyboard phase that you know which pages are gonna pair to do that spread. So after we're working in spread mode and we're ready to export the document, right? We have our title pages, we would have, you know, chapter inserts and all that stuff, but we're ready to go. So we want to move it into turning off facing pages. <clears throat> Some other quick pointers here. You've got your ability to preview the page. You've got snapping right over here. It's a good idea to have this started off right from the beginning. If you want to enable snapping, but also force pixel alignment, move by whole pixels. Again, another thing with Affinity program, and I don't know if this is a glitch or not, I really don't know what's going on here, but if you don't have that set up when you export, you will see gray artifacts of the borderline of, of pictures that bleed over into things or bleed over on the document. Why it does that, the forums cannot tell you why. They don't have any explanation. They have been having this issue since 2019 and still have not fixed it. How to export this so that it's proper for your print file. So it's going to be different between your digital upload and your print version. So for your print version, you're going to go to export. Now that we're in the export tab, I'm going to export in PDF format. And just to start out, and make things as uniform as possible. I'm gonna start with the PDF for print, okay? It's gonna give me all of the settings that I need for the proper print. And then I'm gonna just set the DPI as 400 just to be safe and include bleed. And once you export, you'll have your ready to upload file for KDP proofing. Again, like I said before, it is the custom size. You can change your file however you wish, but this is how the ratio 
works out. It's how I want it to be. Again, you can just edit these files to your liking, but this is what I like and this is what I prefer. Um, it is the trim that is 535 inches by 755 inches. It is not a standard size, but it's a uh, it's smaller than the average book, and that is you know that's the way of mangas. And if you're not gonna get your own distribution and your own printing press um, company to deal with to distribute for you, and you want a totally free experience. KDP is your out of the box, you know, ready to go experience as you're just starting out. It's not going to provide you a perfect bind, but it is going to give you off the ground. So, I mean, I'm happy with the quality of what Amazon has provided. It's not a one to one match to the standard mangas, but, you know, it is what it is when you're first starting out. Now, if you want to do the export for digital, you're just going to go ahead and set that up to digital high quality, 300 DPI, and do not include the bleed. And then you're ready to go. So you have both of your digital file and your print file for Amazon. So pretty simple, straightforward workflow. Hope you enjoy. You can find that on Gumroad and hope that helps.